Hello listeners, this video will discuss Ode to the West Wind, a poem written by Percy Bysshe Shelley. This poem by Shelley is an ode. Ode is a type of lyrical stanza. This is an elaborate structured poem which praises or glorifies an event or an individual. Shelley has written this poem in 1819 in Cascine Wood near Florence, Italy. It was originally published in 1820 by Charles Ollier in London. Charles Ollier was an English publisher and author who associated with the works of Percy Bysshe Shelley and John Keats. This poem was published along with a collection of Prometheus Unbound, a lyrical drama in four acts with other poems. Let us see about Percy Bysshe Shelley. He was one of the major English romantic poets. He was born in the year 1792 and died in the year 1822. Shelley, for all his work, he did not achieve fame during his lifetime. But his recognition for his achievements in poetry grew steadily following his death. He became an important influence for the next generation poets that includes Robert Browning, Algron Charles Weinborn, Thomas Hardy and W.B. Eads. Harold Bloom, an American literary critic, he described Percy Bysshe Shelley as a superb craftsman, a lyric poet without rival and surely one of the most advanced skeptical intellects ever to write a poem. Among his best known works are Ozamandias 1818, Ode to the West Wind 1819, Two Was Skylark 1820, his philosophical essay The Necessity of Atheism, which is written with his friend T. J. Hogg 1811, and his political ballad The Mask of Anarchy 1819. His other major works include The Worst Drama The Sesai 1819 and his long poems such as Alastor or The Spirit of Solitude, 1815, Julian and Madelow, 1819, Adonis, 1821, Prometheus Unbound, 1820, his widely considered masterpiece Hellas, 1822, and his final unfinished work The Triumph of Life, 1822. He was the husband of Mary Shelley, she was an English novelist who wrote the Gothic novel Frankenstein. Shelley died at a very young age, at the age of 29, in boat accident. Now let us see an outline of this poem. Percy writes this poem in the woods outside Florence, Italy, during the autumn of 1819. He addresses the west wind. He treats the west wind as a force of death and decay and welcomes the death and decay because it means that regeneration and rebirth may occur soon. And in the last stanza of this poem, the poet promotes his rebirth through his own poetry. He says that he hopes for regeneration to see success in his political and poetic life. He then describes about a rebirth of society and its ways of writing. Let us now see the line-by-line -line explanation of this poem. O wild west wind, thou breath of autumn's being, thou from whose unseen presence the leaves dead are driven like ghosts from an enchanter fleeing, yellow and black and pale and hectic red, pestilence-stricken multitudes. O thou who charitest to their dark wintry bed, in the first stanza, the poet addresses the unruly west wind. The west wind is the reason for the fall. The second line he says like this, Thou from whose unseen presence the leaves dead. Here he says, You are invisible, but you scatter the fallen leaves like ghosts. The leaves look like ghosts and it runs far from a witch or wizard. Next line, yellow and black and pale and hectic red here he says the leaves are different in color they are yellow black white and red leaves pestilence striking multitudes which means they look like crowds of sick people next line 
O thou who charitest to their dark wintry bed, he points to the west wind as, you are carrying the seeds as if you are their chariot, below the earth the leaves will sleep all through winter. Next line, where they lie cold and low, each like a corpse within its grave. So here he refers like this, they lie there, they are cold and humble like dead bodies in their grave. Until thine azure sister of the spring shall bow, her clarion over the dreaming earth. Here he says, until your blue sister, blue sister is referred to the spring wind. The spring wind blows her trumpet and awakes up all the earth. Next line. And fill driving sweet buds like flocks to feed in air. He then says, the spring wind, it brings out the buds. The buds look like flocks of sheep. They feed in the open air. Next line. With living hues in orders plain and hill. Here he says, she fills the meadows and the hills with sweet smells and beautiful colors. Next line, white sweet which art moving everywhere, destroyer and preserver here oh here. So he says, unruly west wind, you are moving everywhere, you are both a preserver and also a destroyer. Listen to me. This is the explanation of the first canto. There are five cantos in this poem. Now let's see the second canto. Thou on whose train, mid the steep sky's commotion, loose clouds like earth's decaying leaves are shed, shook from the tangled bows of heaven and ocean. Angels of rain and lightning that are spread on the blue surface of thine early surge. Like the bright hair uplifted from the head of some fierce maenad, even from the dim verge of the horizon to the zenith's height, the logs of the approaching storm, thou dirge of thy dying year, to which this closing night will be the doom of a vast peculture, vaulted with all thy congregated might of vapours, from whose solid atmosphere black rain, and fire and hail will burst oh here in the first line if we see thou on whose train mid the steep skies commotion loose clouds like earth's decaying leaves are shed in the second cantos he refers to the clouds the clouds in the sky moves here and there it looks as if how the dead leaves are moving here and there shook from the tangled bows of heaven and ocean here he says the clouds are loosened just like how the leaves have fallen from the branches so he says the clouds are loose from its branches of the heaven and the sea angels of rain and lightning they are like angels they are with full of rain and lightning so the clouds look like as though it would rain and it would bring lightning. They are spread on the blue surface of thin airy surge, like the bright hair uplifted from the head of some fierce mane. The clouds are scattered across the blue sky. It is just like the blonde hair of a wild girl dancing. Even from the dim verge of the horizon to the zenith height, the logs of the approaching storm. Here he says the clouds have stretched from the horizon to the top of the sky. So these changes are like the hair of the coming storm. The meaning of zenith is the highest point that the sun or moon reaches in the sky. The clouds have reached to the heights of the sun or the moon. The clouds have reached to the end of the sky. Thou dirge of the dying year. So here, west wind, you are a sad song of the end of the year. Because every year when it ends, we come across winter. So during the winter, we will have heavy rains and heavy winds. To which this closing night will be the doom of a vast speculature. During the season, every night will be like the doom of a vast tomb. 
tomb is a place where the dead body is buried, vaulted with all the congregated might of vapors. Here, the clouds that you have gathered, you refers to the west wind. The clouds that the west wind have gathered are like the archways that runs across it. Archway means a passage or entrance with an arch over it. From whose solid atmosphere black rain and fire and hail will burst over here. Here he refers to the clouds because the clouds are the reason to bring dark rain, lightning and fall. The dark clouds in the sky look like the tomb. He then says, oh listen to me. Oh, the tomb, the dark rain, lightning, listen to what I am saying. Thou who didst waken from his summer dreams, the blue Mediterranean, where he lay, lulled by the coil of his crystalline streams, beside a pumice isle in Bay's Bay, and saw in sleep old palaces and towers, quivering within the waves' intenser day. All overgrown with azure moors and flowers, so sweet the sense faints picturing them. Thou for whose path the Atlantic's level powers cleave themselves into chasm, while far below the sea blooms and oozy woods which wear the sapless foliage of this ocean. Know thy voice and suddenly grow grey with fear and tremble and despoil themselves over oh, here. The third cantos talks about the water body. So first he mentions about the Mediterranean, blue Mediterranean. It's a big vast ocean. In the first line, thou who didst waken from his summer dreams, the blue Mediterranean. So here he refers to the blue Mediterranean sea. So he says, you west wind, you woke up from the Mediterranean, from its summer dreams, where he lay lulled by the coil of his crystalline streams beside a pumice isle in Bay's Bay. Here he refers to the blue Mediterranean Sea as blue sea. Here he says the blue Mediterranean Sea is just like the crystal clear currents. The Mediterranean Sea is connected to the Atlantic Ocean. So when he mentions the Mediterranean Sea, he says, next to the Mediterranean Sea, it is like an island of volcanic rock in the Bay's Bay. Bay's Bay was an ancient Roman town which was situated in Italy, near Naples. Naples is a place in Italy. Next line. And saw in sleep old palaces and towers curing until the waves intenser day. So he says, inside the water in the bay, the west wind has seen old palaces and towers. Now the old palaces and towers have submerged inside the thicker water body. So all this happens in the daylight. So that is why he refers as intenser day. All overgrown with azure moors and flowers. So he says, Inside the water body, there are overgrown sea plants that look like blue moss and flowers. So sweet the sense faints picturing them. So to look at it, it is so beautiful that the west wind itself faints while looking at it. So that's why the sense faints picturing them. Thou for whose path the Atlantic's level pass, cleave themselves into chasm. He refers to the west wind saying that the west wind is the reason to bring the waves in the Atlantic Ocean. While far below the sea blooms and the oozy woods which wear the sapless foliage of the ocean. Know thy voice and suddenly grow grey with fear. Here he mentions the west wind and also mentions the plants that are beneath the water surface. The saplings that are below the earth's surface can even hear the voice of the west wind. So when those saplings hear it, they fear, they grow grey and tremble and despoil themselves over here. Here also he mentions those flowers, those leaves, those saplings that are beneath the water surface. Even those that are beneath 
trembles and despoil themselves so west wind listen to me next canto if i were a dead leaf thou mightest bear if i were a swift cloud to fly with thee a wave to pant beneath thy power and share the impels of thy strength only less free than thou o comfortable if even i were as in my boyhood and could be the comrade of thy wanderings over heaven as then thou to outstrip thy skyey speed scarce seemed a vision i would never have striven as thus with thee in prayer in my sore need o oh, lift me as a wave a leaf a cloud i fall upon the thorns of life i bleed a heavy weight of hours has changed and bowed one too like thee tameless and swift and proud here in this cantos he urges to be a leaf he urges to be a wave and he urges to be a cloud let's see from its first line if i were a dead leaf thou mightest bear so he the writer the poet wants to become a dead leaf just how the leaf is taken all around the world by the west wind the poet also urges to be a dead leaf if i were a swift cloud to fly with thee so here also he wants to become a cloud which a wave to pant beneath thy power and share the impulse of thy strength in this line he urges to be a wave that is driven by the west wind driven by the impulse of its strength that is the west wind strength only less free than thou o comfortable in this line he says nobody can control the west wind the west wind is left free if even i were as in my boyhood and could be the comrade of thy wanderings over heaven he says if only i could be the way i was when i was a child when i was your friend wandering with you across the sky as then when to outstrip thy skyey speed scarce seemed a vision then the west wind it did not seem crazy to imagine for him he says i want to be fast like how you are i want to have a speedy force in all my activities i would never have striven as thus with thee in prayer in my soul need so if i am you i would have called you i would have prayed for you in all my desperate situation o oh, lift me as a wave or leaf or cloud he urges to get help from the west wind to lift him up like a wave a leaf or a cloud i fall upon the thorns of life i bleed in this line he expresses his situation how his life is he is under thorns of life he is bleeding so he calls upon the west wind to make him a wave or leaf or cloud a heavy weight of hours has changed and bowed one too like thee tameless and swift and proud in this line he says time has taken all his pride when he was young he had energy to bring his fame to bring proudness to him now all his fame and proud has faded so he calls for the west wind to bring his life back to him with full of proud and fame next canto make me thy lyre even as the forest is what if my leaves are falling like its own the tumult of thy mighty harmonies will take from both a deep autumnal tone sweet thou in sadness be thou spirit fierce my spirit be thou me in pity as one dry my dead thoughts over the universe like withered leaves to quicken a new birth and by the incarnation of this verse scatter us from an unextinguished hearth ashes and sparks my words among mankind be through my lips to awakened earth the trumpet of a prophecy o wind if winter comes can spring be far behind in this first line make me thy lyre even as the forest is lyre is a musical instrument 
so the lyre if it is kept in an open environment in a forest example it plays on its own with the wind with the force of wind so he says make me just like that lyre instrument so that the forest can blow on me and so i can bring a music what if my leaves are falling like a zone he questions the west wind so what if my leaves are just falling like the forest leaves the tumult of thy mighty harmonies will take from both a deep autumnal tone so if i am the musical instrument the powerful music which i bring is deep it brings autumn music both from me and from the forest if we both combine together we can bring harmonious music sweet thou in sadness though my life is in sadness i can bring a sweet sound be thou spirit fears my spirit he calls the west wind as spirit fears he asks the west wind to give him the fierce spirit be thou me in peace is one be like me become like me you unpredictable creature so he refers to the west wind as unpredictable one drive my dead thoughts over the universe like withered leaves to quicken a new birth just as how you scatter the leaves from the trees you scatter it all around so just like that scatter my dead thoughts across the universe just like the fallen leaves to inspire someone new and exciting and by the incantation of this verse scatter us from an unextinguished hearth ashes and sparks my words among mankind so he calls for a prayer here he says let this poem be a prayer that scatters the ashes and sparks let my good words spread around the universe throughout the human race be through my lips to an awakened earth the triumph of a prophet so he calls to the west wind speak through me to the people turn my words into a prediction of the future o wind if winter comes can spring be far behind this is a question so he says o wind if winter is on its way isn't it spring going to follow it soon we know that after winter there will be spring in this last line he questions the nature o wind if winter it's on its way then spring is not behind it's going to be near the major theme of this poem is death and rebirth hope this video would be helpful for you if you have queries or suggestion please mention it down in the comment below thank you